What's up, lightweights? Welcome back. Today's guest, WWE superstar, Maxine Dupree. Hello, how are you? Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. You didn't know about your WWE debut till 24 hours before? Yeah. You just be throw it out into the wild like that? Yes. It's It was honestly so crazy. So basically what had happened was there was a character, Max Dupree, who, if you're familiar, is formerly LA Knight, who is now LA Knight. They wanted Max to have a sister. So they created this character, Maxine Dupree, and they were promoting Maxine's debuting in three weeks for like a couple weeks. And I actually was at that SmackDown because it was in Orlando, but I was just there like in the crowd with some of the other people from the Performance Center. My boyfriend came and I had like seen on Twitter people like guesstimating who it could be. And most of them were all like the same two people. And there was a few that said me and I was like, there's just like literally no way because I'm not ready. <laughs> I'm not even cleared to train because I was injured. And so we're sitting there like, and we're like in the 300s and like they, they do it again. Like next week, debuting Maxine Dupree and me and my boyfriend like kind of look at each other and like giggle. And I'm like, this is interesting. And I'm like, there's still no way. Fast forward the next week. Normally in my head, I was like, I would know by Wednesday. For Friday Night Smackdown, I would have to know by Wednesday. When, but I had this like weird gut feeling that I was like, I don't know why, but I feel like it's me. But there's also no way it's me. And no one had any idea who it was. No, no. So then on Wednesday passes and I'm like, I'm in bed and I'm like, all right, it's not me. It's okay. <laughs> My time will come. And then Thursday morning, I wake up to a text from the travel team and they're like, hey, creative says you're needed for SmackDown. And I'm like, oh my gosh. But they still didn't say it was Maxine. So in my head, I'm like, okay, don't get my hopes up. Maybe they just want me to like be there. Maybe they just want to see me in person. Like who knows? So I go to the performance center to go to training. Um, and it was a day where we had school where you just like watch film. So I like pull my coach aside and I'm like, what do you think this means? And he's like, oh, I'm sure they just want to see you in person. Like I was working with Von Wagner and Mr. Stone at that time. So he was like, I'm sure it's all three of you guys going. Like, don't even worry about it. And I'm like, okay. Then it's like noon. So I go to the head writer's office and I'm like, Hey, like, am I going to SmackDown? Like, what's going on? And he's like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, I got a text that I'm needed for SmackDown. And he's like, oh, my phone's dead. Like, <laughs> let me pull up my email. And then he's like, oh, yep, Sophia Cromwell being called up as Maxine Dupree. And they're like, your flight's at four. And I was like, I got to go get a spray tan. <laughs> <laughs> so I ran out of there, got a spray tan, and yeah. What tapes are you watching when you're at Performance Center? Everything. They watch they watch back like your own matches, things you've done, just like we call them PC lives where you're doing like practice matches. Um, we watch back stuff from back in the day, everything. It kind of depends on the coach because the coach runs it. So it's really whoever their cup of tea is. Are you in a group or is it just one on one? Yeah, it's group. Whoa. Yeah. And you guys are all just chiming in like, oh, that worked, that didn't, he should have done this differently. Yes. And like they'll stop and say, like, see how he did this. This is why you want to do this. Or this is why this worked during this time frame. But maybe today that style wouldn't work. How often are you training? So now I'm training, I would say like in ring, probably two to three times a week because I'm on the road and then it depends when I can go into the performance center and then also training before TV on Mondays is helpful and I'm starting to do that. When you go up on that top rope and you're going to jump out into a group of people, yeah. first off, insane. Do you practice that or is that like... No, I had never done that before. And you just... I was actually having this conversation the other day with someone where they're like, you don't like try that first. And I'm like, no, because I don't think it's, I don't know why we don't try it first. So we just don't. It's just like, it makes sense not to. Not, yeah. Cause it's like, what if, you know, someone gets hurt or I don't know. It's like, you're just going to go, they're yeah. going to catch you. And it, in the moment too. And I think this is one thing with our sport. That's so crazy. is like, you can practice a million, a million times and then you get in front of the crowd and like the nerves hit or timings off or something. And you're like, okay, I got a full send. It's like, yes, you could practice that, but where you land might be different than when you practice it anyways. And that's why it's, you know, great to be out there with such incredible, incredible women who are working so hard and get underneath you and catch you. <laughs> What's that feel like when you hit that move and the crowd goes wild? It was like such a pinch me moment because I wasn't expecting to do that that day. And then <laughs> <laughs> that was not on my bingo card for that Monday. Um, and then I was like, okay, I, I was like, I know I can do it. I'm, I'm very capable. It'll be fine. It'll be so fun. But then also like you get up there and you're like, Okay, I gotta go, I gotta go. Like, I can't sit here too long and overthink it. I gotta just full send it and go. And then afterwards, you're just like, oh, it's like the best feeling. And then someone ever. comes up and hits you from behind, throws and you through. Exactly. <laughs> it ends it so quick. It's short lived, but yes. can you break? Everyone always asks, how do you even get to that point? So, can you explain your story of how you got into the WWE? Yeah. So, we used to have a show called Total Divas that played on E! 
And I was obsessed with that show in high school. Like, I was like, oh, these girls are so cool. They're so athletic. Like, they have the coolest style. I just, like, thought it was so, so interesting. And I was a competitive dancer. And then I danced for the NFL and the NBA. So I was in the performance thing. And I loved performing. And you made it to the Super Bowl and the championships? Yeah. But I just, like, got to a point where I was like, okay, I feel fulfilled in this. Like, what's next? And my dad's dad, my papa, is, like, a diehard fan for forever like you stick my dad to shows like he's been watching never ever misses monday night wrestling ever um so once once like i was ready to make a transition it was father's day i was home hanging out with my dad and my papa and we were just joking around and i was like should i just like apply for the dovey like i think that like it's my time you know i think i can do it (laughs) so i applied online and then i ended up i like didn't hear anything and then i ended up emailing my modeling agency and i was just like so random but I have this like really weird life goal to be in the WWE like if you know anyone (laughs) to get me a tryout will you let me know and then two weeks later I got invited to the SummerSlam tryout in Las Vegas went it was a blast is that an open audition um so it's invite only uh they usually bring about 50 people and so once you're in it's like a three-day tryout where you're you're in the ring but you're not wrestling you're just like rolling around doing shuffles seeing how you move um you do a one minute promo and then you do like just some other activities and conditioning just so they can kind of like get to know you and, and see you. What's the one minute promo? You on the mic? Mm-hmm. Do you In remember? front of everyone. Did you practice it before? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. I came, I came ready. I was prepared. <laughs> I don't know what I would have done if I wasn't, honestly. Um, but yeah, so then... What was crazy is in the past, after a tryout, it's like you don't hear anything for like three months. And then once you hear, you start like a year later. My class was the first class where they said that day, the third day of the tryout, they brought in, I'm going to say 15 of us. And we're like one at a time saying, we're offering you a contract. You're moving to Orlando in 30 days. So then I went back to Arizona, packed up my life, moved to Orlando and started a month later. And you just kept training and... Yeah. So then once you're signed, you're in developmental, which... NXT that plays on USA Network on Tuesdays. That's our developmental like TV program. So once you're at the Performance Center, it's kind of run. I didn't go to college, but I'm going to say it was it's run like a college sport <laughs> where they give you you're assigned to like a group and then your group has a certain schedule for each day of the week. And you are pretty rare because you only were in NXT for like a year or so, right? Yeah, I had a very unique experience. And then you got called up mm-hmm. to Raw. Yeah. Got called up to SmackDown first, and then we got traded to Raw. What is that like going from NXT to those bigger arenas? Yeah, it is wild. Because <laughs> how many people are you performing in front of at NXT? I'm going to say like 50, 200. It's not, it's not a lot. Right. It's not a lot. Maybe and then, 100, yeah. And then once you go off to SmackDown Raw, 15,000, yes. 10,000, 20,000. Crazy. Yeah, it's wild. Do you ever watch your matches back? Yeah. I have to because I feel like for me, I'm still so new and I haven't had that many reps that I need it. I need to watch it back for a learning experience. Like I need to go back and be like, okay, that didn't look good or that looked weird or this is something I can improve on. And I I think that's where I am in a unique situation where most people do a lot more reps while they're in NXT, doing live events, doing TV. And because I didn't do that, there's things that I do sometimes that I'm like, oh, why did I do that? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Do you practice in front of the mirror to like get your movements and like staring at the cameras? I don't really. You know what's funny is like the the personality and character stuff that comes natural. Like, I don't know what I do when I'm out there, to be honest. And I don't I don't practice that part of it. Like when I'm in training, I don't like say like thank you to each move like I just like do my move and True. get out of the ring yeah. and it's the next person's turn and I'm like okay like I never practice any of that that I just go with how it feels while I'm out there and I feel like that's something that has been you know cool about my character is that it does feel so natural to me that it's easy enough for me to do that there's not really like too much of a line between you and your character there's not and that's what's funny is that I okay so <laughs> I, my whole life, have known that I am, like, really goofy and awkward, okay? I know that about myself, but I feel like I've done a really good job of hiding it from everyone. (laughs) For, like, you know, I hit it for a good, yeah, I'm 26 now, I hit it for a good 25 years. And I used to, like, really care about, like, my social media, like, I wanted all the photos to have the same filter, I wanted them to be laid out a certain way, I wanted everything to look perfect, like, I just never showed that side of me. And this is the first time where I've been kind of thrown into a situation where that side of me is what makes my character good. 
And so it's really, really fun to like lean into, but it's hilarious because people will comment on my photos sometimes. And the first time I saw it, I was like, oh my gosh, they know. They were like, she's so awkward. I love it. I'm like, you know that I'm awkward. I thought I was still hiding it. Are you ever going to unprivate those old videos? I should. You should. I tried diving into it, but they're all hidden. <laughs> all I've got is vlogs of WrestleMania and that's it. I know. Uh, I really should. I should. I just, one day I might like just bring everything out of the archives because I used to be obsessed with like making YouTube videos when I was like 18, 19, 20. What kind of videos? Um, like vlogs, what I eat in a day, everything. Did you do Musical.ly's TikToks? I was never on Musical.ly. Yeah, and I, I love TikTok now. But And I, I think that this is part of my character that has been really cool for me is it's made me more comfortable just like being me. So now I'm way more open on TikTok and Instagram and I feel less like I need to filter everything. And it's like a weird, it's a really weird like acceptance of that part of myself that has kind of come through this character. You're in a group, right? Yeah. What is it called? Is Alpha it Academy. Four people or mm -hmm. three people, almost four. And then junior cadet. Yes. Junior cadet. <laughs> but in it, you're like the one that teaches them how to run social media. Yes. Is that is that real? They really yes. don't really know how to. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> that is real. Um, OK, so I mean, well, I have to give credit where credit is due. Chad makes all of our graphics that show like what cities we're going to be in for like raw live events, whatever. And for, he's, do you guys have like a little group chat figuring that? Yes. But okay. he, well, he he like runs it all and does all that, which is like so great. Like he's so talented with like graphic design and like that kind of stuff. But when it comes to like Instagram, TikTok, that's where I take the reins. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you do all the trends. You bring it to the table. <laughs> yes. And <laughs> we were just talking about this on the bump yesterday. It's funny because I used to ask them all the time, like, can we make a TikTok? Can we do this? Can we do that? And they were like, Sydney, <laughs> like, we have a match. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, so you don't want to make a TikTok right before you go out for your very important match? That's crazy. So I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm pulling it back because I, you know, I love them and I love being in the group and I don't want them to hate me. So I, I try to be patient, you know, and calm about my TikTok approach. Yeah. What's the text? What's the group chat like between the three of you? Usually it's like me and Otis asking Chad, like, wait, what are we doing? What are we wearing? What color? <laughs> what time? <laughs> What's something the WWE audience doesn't know or may not realize about your travel life? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I would just say like we are on the road a lot, not as much as they were back in the day, but like if you have a live event weekend, like for example, um, like two weeks ago we had live events. So it's you fly in Saturday morning, you do the show that day. And then after that show, you drive to the next city. But sometimes the drives are like four hours. So you're like driving through the night in like the middle of nowhere. And then you get to the next city on Sunday, you do another live event show. And then after that show, you drive to wherever Monday Night Raw is. So it's definitely a lot of time in the car. Like, I don't know if people realize, like, I don't, I'm not sure if they have an understanding of where we travel to and how we get to each place from point A to point B, but definitely a lot of, a lot of time in the car. How do you pass that time? So I usually drive with someone, which is like fun just to hang out. So it's usually like a little, you know, bonding moment, listen to podcasts, that kind of stuff. Do you guys ever watch old matches back and study them? Yes, but not on the car rides. Oh, uh, <laughs> what's the best technical advice Otis or Chad Gable ever gave you? It's all on the hips. <laughs> <laughs> That's the advice for all things. Yeah. Whether you're doing the Tazawa shuffle or suplex, it's all on the hips. <laughs> Do you like doing the Caterpillar? Um, yes. <laughs> However, I'm not good at, I'm not good at doing the worm guys. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> and the first time I wish we had it on video, the first time they're like, okay, you're going to do it. I was like, okay, well like in my head, I can do it backwards. So I was like, oh, I can totally do it forward. No worries guys. I got this. Because you're a dancer, you're a cheerleader. Yes. But then I went to do it and it was like, I like face, it was so bad. It was so bad. I was like, oh my gosh. So like, I do think my, my caterpillar has gotten so much better from time to time. It is not on the level of Otis, but I'm getting there. I mean, he's crazy. He's like no, it's very insane. limber. Insane. He's like, like it's wild. <laughs> Did Chad teach you to throw someone over the top ropes yet? Royal Rumble's coming up. Of course, I'm ready. We've been training. We're staying training. I'm excited. Do you know if you're in it? I don't know yet. Mm -hmm. I hope so. Because that's next month, right? Yeah, it's coming up. If you could fight any legend in the ring during Royal Rumble, who would it be? Nikki Bella. Really? Yeah. Now she goes by Nikki Garcia, but she is like 
my idol. That's who you'd want to throw over the top rope? Well, honestly, I just want to be in the ring with her. Like, if it was up to me, we would be a tag team. But if my <laughs> only opportunity to be in the ring with her is to throw off the top rope, I will do my best. I will try. <laughs> if and when you win the Royal Rumble, mm -hmm. who would you challenge? Rhea Ripley. Yeah. I need I need another shot at that. Yeah, because you just had your big singles match with her. Yeah. Last week. Scary, yes. <laughs> was What's that like when you're walking in there about to face someone who's had so much experience? Yeah, I was genuinely... I was genuinely scared that day. I was like, oh, just because it's hard when you have so much respect for someone. And like, I, I just like think the world of her. And it's, and on top of that, she's not only she's so talented, she's dangerous in the ring. She's, you know, has this like huge like confidence and like oh, just like persona about her that's like so cool. But then to like come in and share that space with her, like that's a lot of pressure to live up to, you know? And I was like, oof, it was scary. Is your team hyping you up as you're about to walk out? Oh, yeah. Yeah. What are they telling you? Chad said to me right before he walked out, he's like, you're about to wrestle the women's champion. Like, just Do you want to make a TikTok? Take it <laughs> Literally, why did he not ask me that? <laughs> you really only, I mean, WWE is so interesting because at the end of the day, you really only have 15 minutes to shine. Yeah, or less. Usually or like less. two. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How do you even captivate the audience in such a short amount of time to make sure that they want to see you next week? Yeah, that's hard. I think what's been key for us, or at least for myself, I can speak for me. I have so much fun out there. Like I just like going to work is such a blessing and it's it's so, so fun. Like whether it's out by the ring or, you know, filming a backstage, like I just love it. And so I just hope like my hope is that that always shines through and like that light just shines through and makes people feel you know, like that magnetic, like, oh, I need to see that again. So that's where I try to just come from a place of like pure joy and hope that that reads. But it's it's hard because you don't have a lot of time and you want to make the most of that moment. Do you try and leverage social media to keep the audience engaged throughout the week? I do because I love social media and I feel like it's such a such an awesome tool for what we do to keep people engaged. And also, I think something that's, you know, different and unique with what we do is that it's like you're going back and forth between like okay are you posting as your character are you posting as yourself are you posting your family life and I always try and think of it for me as like like celebrities that I like like I want to see their personal life I want to see you know their kid or this or that so I feel like it's it gives me a little confidence like okay I can post some of this and some of that but I do think just keeping them engaged with you as an individual through social media is really important what celebrities do you like I'm a, I'm a celebrity girl. I love them all. Um, Big reality girl. Yeah, I was going to say, I love the Kardashians. <laughs> um, I love, I grew up on Dance Moms. Like, that was my show. I JoJo love Siwa? That. Yes, but like, she came in season four. I'm talking OG, okay? Like, <laughs> Chloe, Paige, Maddie, Brooke, Mackenzie, even Kendall, okay? Ziegler? Yes, the Ziegler yeah. girls, yeah. Okay. Like, I love following them. I listen to what the mom's podcast back to the bar i love that i love just like oh, i don't know i love it so i follow all of them and like what they're doing and i love a reality show that follows the same cast each season real housewives you know what's crazy is that's the only reality show i haven't gotten into oh interesting mm -hmm. every other one i'm in <laughs> do you like bravo stuff um i like vanderpump but I'm more of like an e-girl. Did you lose your mind with the Tom Sandoval stuff? Lost my absolute mind, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still losing my mind. <laughs> What's your workout regimen like now to be in WWE? So I'm entering my buff girl era, guys. <laughs> um, I love Pilates. So that's like my favorite workout. And I feel like that snatches my body the most. So like for TV purposes, love Pilates um, but I'm really working on actually getting stronger so I can be more successful and you know do more things so that right now it's like working out at least five days a week weightlifting and then also Pilates when you're driving those long hours is it hard to get that in um, because I'm not like a crazy weightlifting girl I can go to the hotel gym and use some dumbbells and be good like, yeah it doesn't it doesn't take much for me when you're walking out to 80,000 people what's going through your brain it's just like crazy. Like what we do is so wild. And like to walk out there, like there's nothing better than when our music hits, you walk out there and then we all, we all hit it and you see everyone do it with you. And you're like, this is wild. And like, just to like be able to connect with the fans and like look into their eyes as you're like walking on the ramp and like really like feel that moment with them is just so insane. It's so surreal. 
Yeah, when my wife and I went to see Raw a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And you guys killed it. Thank you. We thought it was so... the. I didn't see the shoosh yeah. up until that time and seeing it live and everyone, we just kept talking about how the crowd was going nuts yeah. for it. You guys and Dominic Mysterio, crazy, crazy. It's wild. Killed it. Thank you. What older WWE tapes do you study or watch? I love women's wrestling and, so, and I love that whole diva era because that's what I, you know, I grew up on Total Divas, so that's what I love. Um, so I love watching like the Bella Twins back. I love watching Maurice. Um, I even love watching like Lita and Trish back when they had their feud. Like, that was they, a good rivalry. Yes, like there's just so many incredible women's matches that I love to watch back. But I also, I like to watch back our top girls and watch what they were doing when they were in NXT because they were putting on a show. Did you take any notes from them specifically of like how they were able to? I think like of like how like they made it. Yeah, how they moment. climbed that ladder. I think it's just, it's hard because it's, you can't replicate it. Right. It's like you can watch what someone else did and be like, OK, I'm going to try and make that climb to be that like huge superstar. But really, it has to be individual because I feel like the fans can read through when it's not authentic to you. Yeah. Do you have an old favorite wrestler like from like the 2000s of like the Mick Foley's, The Rock, Stone Cold, Undertaker? I think I mean, obviously, it's like so cool to watch all of them but I'm just like I'm such a little girly girl you know like if, if I'm gonna go back and watch those I'm watching Trish <laughs> was she your favorite yeah I I really like grew up and when I was started watching it it was later so I wasn't watching it live during that time yeah so I think now looking back absolutely I also love watching Stephanie McMahon like her when she like struts In her down villain the, era yes it's so good like I'm obsessed I'm obsessed and I love like any time that she is at an event I'm like ugh, I just feel like so honored to be in her presence like I just I think the world of her what's it like working with Triple H who is a 14 time world champion he's been in your shoes do you almost feel like he's understands your perspective of being a wrestler growing in the industry yeah it's unreal like for that to be my boss is like, what is life? Um, it's it's just so special to get to like be in his presence and like learn from him. And I do think that he gives a lot of grace and is really understanding. And I think that's what's cool about working for someone like him is obviously he's brilliant when it comes to creative and putting on a show and all of that. But he also is like a human and a dad and a husband. And it's like cool when you have those you know moments where maybe you're not like feeling like you did your best or whatever. and to have someone that's that's understanding of what you're going going through is is cool. Does he have his own personal gym inside each venue? <laughs> no, I don't think so. But if he does, I need to go find it. I feel like he would. He's so jacked. Yeah, I know. I know. There's there's no way he's hitting the hotel gym. You know. <laughs> no, you guys are both nil. <laughs> yeah, we both got the eight pounds. <laughs> what was it like working with Shawn Michaels, the Heartbreak Kid? So it's crazy because when I was in NXT, I was I never wrestled. I just valeted. So I what does valeted mean? Um, so I was paired with Von Wagner. So I would like walk him out, woo, go, <laughs> do a little bit of that. Um, yeah. So basically, you're like managing the talent, and I still do that role in Alpha Academy, and I love doing that. Like it's so fun to like be on the outside of the ring and like cheering for them and helping them win in the best ways I can. Um, so I wasn't working as closely with him during that time. However, I did get to have some like nice conversations with him and like really just see that human side of him. And he puts on such a good show. Like the talent in NXT is unreal. The show every week is so good. And we actually got to go back to NXT a few weeks ago and we were, we did five weeks there and we got to do a six man tag match. And that was my first time wrestling at NXT and like to get to work with him on, on that was so, so cool. Are, is he at every event? Yeah. For NXT. Wow. Yeah. And is Triple H at every WWE? Yeah. What's that like when he's walking through the through the hallways in the back. It's like... Does everyone kind of like... <laughs> <laughs> and I was going to say it's like in um, The Devil Wears Prada. When yeah. into, I was like, pause. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Look busy. <laughs> yeah, I know. I think it's it's not like that at all, actually, because, you know, I think that he's he is just like so good at what he does and he's so like relaxed that it's not... It's like he walks by, you shake his hand and say hi and have your little conversation. And yeah. Does he know your name? Yeah. yeah. Whoa. <laughs> I know. It's actually crazy because... Um, I keep a list on my phone of WWE moments to remember. And the first one is from my tryout, which he was there. 
and we were doing conditioning. We were doing like what we call grape squishers where you're in the corner doing like high knees and you like drop down to a burpee. And he was standing in the corner like, let's go, Sid, you could do it. And I was like, oh, this moment, please. <laughs> can never forget this. So it's the, the very first one on my list. Why do you write those down on a list? Because I just feel like I'm like really into goal setting. So I'll, I'll be like, even now, like thinking about, okay, what can I do next year? What can I do to accomplish more? What can I do in anything? So it's like, when you're when you're always thinking about what you're doing next, it's so easy to like miss the moments that you're experiencing now that you prayed for last year. So I like to like write them down one so I don't forget them, and two so that I can go back and look and be like, wow, that was like a huge moment for me where I like really really felt how cool this was. And now looking back, it's like, oh my gosh, who cares? That was like a one second thing. But to remember that feeling when it was your first time getting to do that, where you're like. Wow, that's so, so special. So I just, I wrote it down for that. What else is on your goal list? Um, oh, I have so much. Um, for this next year, I am just, I really want to improve more in ring. I'm excited to like keep training in that, in that respect. And also just, I want to compete more in the ring. I'm excited for that. Singles matches? Tag team? I would love to, both. Yeah. You have a tag team match coming up, right? Um, not as of now, but we just did one a few weeks ago, me and Ivy Nile, and she's actually facing Rhea Ripley on the first. So that's going to be crazy. Are you going to be out there on her? I mean, I'm not sure yet. I'm going to see what she needs from me. If she needs me out there, I'm there. What would you do if you got an action figure? Oh my gosh. Is that on your list? Yeah, I would. Okay. Actually, that reminds me. I have two then. I also want to be in the video game. I'm like, come on guys. (laughs) I would love to be in the video game and I would love to have an action figure. That would be so cool. Who makes your in-ring gear? So the gear that I wrestle in, I have made. Um, we have I use two different people. No gimmick gear is one of them. And there's another guy who makes the boy singlet, so he'll make me matching ones. Yeah. And then the stuff that I wear like ringside or that I just like add like shoe shirt Alpha Academy to, I make all of those. You have a clothing line too, no? I do, yes. What's that called? Jaunty. And what is it? So I started Jaunty five years ago um, when I was living in LA I was cheering for the Rams and I was like just wanted to have something else going on my parents were entrepreneurs and it's really evolved over the years like when I look back on what it was when it started I'm like oh my gosh that's not me at all anymore Um, so it's just kind of evolved with me but basically it's a women's clothing boutique so I do design and produce some of the clothing and then I also buy wholesale and carry other brands and you take care of all that yourself Yes. I have one employee right now. When I was living in Arizona, I had like nine girls that worked for me because I had a storefront and that was like my, what I was doing. So I was like managing all of that. Where was it? Uh, in Scottsdale. What part? Um, Old Town? No. Old Town right by, um, what is that place called? Hot Chick. (laughs) I feel like I know it. Yeah. Right by like all like the clubs, like the whole like vortex of, of nightlife. Yeah. It's like right over there. Yeah. So when I was living there, that was like everything I was doing. So it was much more my like number one focus and then i actually opened the storefront and then four months later got wwe so i had to move to orlando but i was still on a lease so i was like see you guys did you <laughs> on to the next sublet lease it no, to someone else? i just was like managing it from afar uh-huh. which is what i did for a long time and now i've converted it into just like our shipping and fulfillment center so i have one girl who ships our orders she's amazing and i do the rest all the social media the website all of that what's your dream for that to be It's hard because that has shifted since my life has changed. Like, I think when I started it, like, that was, you know, I wanted multiple locations and I wanted that to be, like, my empire. And I just have found so much joy in, like, what I do now that, like, I just want to, like, pour everything I have into WWE. And so it's definitely, like, taken a little back burner because of that. And so it's just, like, I just want to keep it. I want to keep it really authentic to me, which is why I just released a new sweat set that says stay in your lane and manifest your dreams. And I just want to do small drops. I want it to be super niche and, you know, like limited edition. I don't I don't want some, you know, overproduced or like too many different like I just want it to be me. I don't want too many different like creative minds in it or as cool as that is for so many brands. I feel like for me, I just I want it to be really authentic to me and what I'm going through in my life at that time. Was it always just you? Yeah. So you did that too while you were cheerleading? Yes. You were a cheerleader for what teams? Los Angeles Rams and the Phoenix Suns. And you made it to the Super Bowl? Yeah. And you made it to the NBA championships? Yeah. What was the Super Bowl like? Insane, you guys. Like, I I cannot. It's It was the coolest experience. Our owner 
gave all of the cheerleaders two tickets. So my mom came and uh, my aunt and then my cousin also came. And we had like the whole week. And it was crazy because it was like you arrived to the city. I don't know if you've been. Have you been to a Super Bowl? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's like when you go to Super Bowl, whatever city it's in, like the city is like decked out for like literally the whole week. Like Oh, I've been to Saturday night. Okay. Yes. Like it's wild. So it's like from the second we got there it was just so surreal and you know like we have like the welcome party and like usually with nfl cheerleaders you're not involved in anything that like the football players are getting it's usually like a lot separate um but for super bowl they like let us in on all the fun stuff and our families got to enjoy it and then on top of that like you're looking up and you're like oh my gosh like how did i get here like this is crazy are the cheerleaders in the madden game uh no it's they might have cheerleaders in the Madden game, but it's not like based off of us. Got it. Yeah, because cheerleading is like for NFL and NBA is really interesting because like you don't use your last name. Like you're like I was Los Angeles Rams cheerleader Sydney. Right. So they're not like promoting you as an individual. They're promoting you as one of their cheerleaders. Were you a trading card? No, they don't do any of that. Oh really? Mm-mm. WWE does trading cards. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I get to sign a lot of those, which is fun. Do you have a favorite match you've ever done? Um, my favorite match is honestly, because I haven't had that many, so it's not that hard to pick. <laughs> I'm going to say our match at NXT, the six man. That yeah. was so much fun. We worked with Metaphor. They were they were great. It was a blast. It was just like a really cool experience. And I felt like that was a, a good match for me. I had fun. I did a lot of things I didn't done before. So it was really exciting. And you did the eight woman tag team match too? Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot of people in the ring. Yes. Yeah, it is. And that was really cool because I got to work with Natalia and I, I love Natalia. So that was special that I got to wrestle her in the ring and I was with my tag team partner, Ivy, and it was it was so much fun. What's it like when you're in the arena the day of? Is it kind of like all like reuniting at school almost where... <laughs> yeah, you're like, you haven't seen your friends for a week. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's so... My like Monday day of, I'm going to give you my Monday rundown. So I travel with Chelsea Green and she's one of my best friends. We have so much fun. So we get to have like a little sleepover. Do you guys live week. together? No. Okay. She's like has a husband. I'm just like her work wife. <laughs> <laughs> so, she has a husband or something like that and like some animals and a home. Yeah. Um, but we travel together. So it's like so fun. So we get to have our little sleepovers and catch up. And then we go to work on Mondays. On Mondays, you don't have to get there until 2 p.m. if it's like an East Coast show. So we usually go and find a local breakfast spot, try and like drive around and see something in the city that we're in. Um, and then once you get to the arena, it's like you're in hair and makeup, you're trying to fit in lunch while figuring out what you're doing, figuring out what you're going to wear, get your photos done, make a TikTok or two. At what point do you talk to Chad and Otis? Usually around three. Yeah. So like as soon as you get there? Yeah, yeah. We trying should to touch base out. and yeah. What's catering like? Well, I just love a free meal. <laughs> Same. <laughs> so I'm going to eat anything. Um, we always have like clean options, like just salt and pepper chicken and white rice. And then the rest like rotates each week. So like last week we had beef and broccoli. It was great. And there's a great dessert table, which is so dangerous, but I love it. I want to be a WWE superstar. It's honestly the best thing in the whole world. You you made it. That's what's so crazy. It's Thank so you. cool. Yeah, it's it's like so unreal that this is my life. I love it so much. It just like brings me so much joy. I never want it to end. If you didn't get that call from WWE, what do you think you'd be doing? Crying. I'm <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I don't know, to be honest. I think that I would probably just be diving more into business. Um, the clothing line yeah which I'm so grateful that like I have the opportunity to do business on the side but like yeah I can't imagine my life without this yeah what do you think was the hardest part of having the storefront so when I lived there I loved it because I loved being in there I loved I've like had one million different random jobs so like I learned a ton when I worked at Lululemon so like I loved what did you do there uh, I was a sales associate. Yeah. So I learned like just so much about like display and all that kind of stuff. So I loved being in the store when I was living there and that was what I was doing. It brought me a lot of joy during that time of my life. Um, I would say the most challenging thing for me was like managing employees because I am a severe people pleaser, like to my core. That's what everyone says. It's the employees that make it the hardest. Yeah. It's hard because it's like, I get it. Like I understand I'm hiring someone who's 20 and you know, is in college and like, if I were you, I wouldn't want to work either. I'd want to sit on my phone. Like, I get it. So it's hard for me to be like, hey, can you um not do that? <laughs> yeah. Is it crazy to be part of such a huge company? 
it's wild. We actually were just at headquarters when we were filming the bump. And like, it's so cool to see how many people do so many different things. Like, I think as talent, sometimes we think like, okay, I have like the one person I talk to in travel, but there's the travel department has like 20 people. So it's not just that person working. It's like, they have to like delegate and communicate to everyone. And it's cool to like actually kind of get to see just how many people are working to like make this company what it is. Do you have your own team of people that you deal with? Um, most of the time, yes. So like for like talent relations, like you're, you have like your person that you go to for travel, you have your person that you go to, that kind of stuff. Who does all the car bookings when you're driving from city to city? Is that you? Yeah. So we got our own hotel and cars. And then do you manage like where you want to stay? Yep. If you guys are going to overseas, Mm -hmm. can you extend your trip, stay longer? If there's not like TV or something you have to be back for, but normally like we just went to Germany, but like, it's like you're in Germany for that, those five days, but you have raw on Monday. So you have to come back and, and do raw. Which performing for the German crowd like? It was so much fun. That was like such a cool experience. And we got to do a meet and greet and like to meet people there. It's like, it's just so fun. Like you're like, oh my gosh, you guys came here to watch us. Like that's wild to me. It's just, it's so cool. Are they speaking to you in English? Yeah. Can we talk about your workout routine now? Yeah. What do you, what are you mostly focusing on? I know you obviously want to build more mass to get yeah. bigger. Yeah. Like you want to get shredded. Yeah. I want to be lean and shredded. That's my goal right now. And I just, I just want to be stronger. Yeah. I just want to have like stronger. I want, my legs need to be stronger. My arms need to be stronger. And I think too, for me, like stamina wise, I just want to be at a more elite level when it comes to like conditioning and like in-ring conditioning all of that like I just want to make sure I'm at a place where no matter what they ask me to do I'm like okay yeah I can do that I'm good what do you think the stamina is like for someone who's in the Royal Rumble for like they're the first oh. entry into the very last is that crazy I cannot even imagine like that is so wild I don't think people realize like when you're out there on top of the fact that like it's nerve-wracking of course but you're also like performing and you're doing your character stuff like I fully am still at a place where I'm not breathing when I'm out there. Like I'm, I'm just holding my breath for four minutes and then we're going to breathe after. <laughs> so I can't imagine being in there for like 40 minutes. I mean, granted the women that are doing that and the men are, have been doing this for so long that they have that stamina and they know where to breathe. Yeah. But still I'm like, Oh my gosh, it's wild. Do you ever do moves that you're impressed that you nailed? Yes. <laughs> Every time. I'm like, oh, that, one, that, that, that worked. I survived. Yeah, when I go out there most of the time, I'm like, oh my gosh, please. Just do it, do it, do it. Don't mess this up. You can do it. Do you ever interact with the crowd and they like, you're, because you're a baby face. People, mm -hmm. people really like look forward to seeing you. Thank you. Does anyone ever like give you attitude or sass? Okay, listen. This live event the other week, <laughs> this little boy puts his hand out for a high five. I go to high five him and he fully goes, oh. <laughs> I was like, I've actually never been more offended than by this eight year old little boy. And this is where you turn heel. And I was like, are you joking? I'm just going to give you a high five. I just wasted my high five on you. Yeah. Do you ever see Maxine signs? Yeah, it's so cool when that happens. I'm like, it's so awesome. Would you ever want to be on a show like Total Divas? So I've always said I wouldn't do reality TV because I'm just like too much of an overthinker. And I think I'm a little too like, I I do my best to not involve myself in things that don't involve me. So it's like, it would be really hard for me to, to be on a reality TV show where like you have to create drama and you have to make it good TV. Just because that would like really stress me out that people would like think that I was mean or like had a it like evil in me or just, you know what I mean? Like, you know, when you watch something and you're like, oh, that person is not a good person. But like, you also don't know if that's true or if it's the edits. Right. So it's, that has always kind of been a thing for me that I'm like, I don't think mentally I could do that. However, <laughs> if it was Total Divas, I would full send it. Oh yeah, yeah. I would do. I would do anything that's like WWE related. When you're cutting a promo, mm -hmm. are you very cautious about how you're like everything in it, just because you want to come off in that certain way? Um, I think less with that with promos, just because it's like that is like more of that natural character for me. So I usually try and just like let it flow. However, it comes out because I feel like those are the moments that end up being really good, even though those are also the moments that I look back and I'm like so embarrassed at like what I did with my face. But <laughs> those are also the moments that it, it tends to be the, the really exciting part of that moment. You know, like it ends up being like, oh, that was actually really cool. Even right. though to me, I'm like, why did I do that with my face? <laughs> yeah, because when there's two other you're part of the group. Mm -hmm. you're standing on the side where you're talking. So you have to kind of like really like be behind them. Yeah. Or figure out what you're going to say. Yeah. And I think too, it's like 
no, I think if you're really in tune with your character and who you are, then those moments are easy because you're just hanging out with your close friends and supporting them on whatever they're saying or doing. Yeah. You know? What do you have coming up for the holidays? I am going to Sacramento. I'm so excited to go home and hang out with my parents. Going to the Sacramento Kings game tonight, which they're playing the Suns. So I'm going to really be torn. But I'm a Sacramento girl to my core, so I'm going to root for the Kings. Do you know any of the cheerleaders there? Not currently on the Kings. Um, I believe that it's my old dance coach that's running the team, though. Because they. it's actually funny growing up, like when you go to a dance studio in Sacramento, it's like all the teachers are like former Sac Kings dancers, but they transitioned. So they're not a regular dance team unless they've transitioned back. But from my understanding, they went to more of like a hip hop squad co-ed. So it's like a different vibe than like traditional um, NBA dancers, like the Laker girls, for example. Well, do you have any holiday traditions? Um, Oh my gosh, we really don't. We are going to have a pickleball tournament on New Year's Eve. Are you good? Uh, not New Year's Eve. Sorry. On Christmas Eve. <laughs> um, I am decent. My dad is really good at pickleball yeah. and he plays like four times a week. It's his favorite thing to do. It's actually so cute because his friends come over and they all play pickleball in the morning. I'm like, you guys are so cute. I love this for you. Um, so we're going to do that. And one of my best friends I grew up with, her dad is good friends with my dad. So we're doing a full family pickleball tourney. Oh, that'll be so fun. Yeah, I'm excited. Where Are you from Sacramento originally? Yep. And then you moved to... So I grew up in Sacramento and then when I was 18, I moved to Los Angeles. For lived... what? So I was supposed to go to ASU. I like got in, committed. I was like, yes, I'm going to go to ASU, be a college girl, hopefully make the dance team. And then around the same time, I signed with an agency in Los Angeles. So my senior year of high school, my mom and I flew to LA like once or twice a week for auditions. And I like book a job and go back to do it. What kind of jobs? Um, all dance related, like backup yeah. dancing, um, commercial print work, that kind of stuff. Are you in any music videos that we know? I'm not actually, I know, I never. So the thing with music videos that's hard is I was so young. So it's like when you're 16, you can't really book like a music video for like a rapper. Yeah. <laughs> they don't want a child in it. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was like, it was so much fun. So then because I missed so much school, my high school was like, well now you have to come do Saturday schools if you want to like walk a graduation because you've missed too many days. And it was this whole thing. So essentially my parents were like, you can go to ASU, but if you go to ASU, like, you're not flying to LA every week. Like you have to like go to college or you can push pause on that and move to Los Angeles and pursue dance. So I just put pause on college and have not pressed play. <laughs> What's the best Christmas present you ever got? The best Christmas present I ever got. Oh, that's a really good question. I don't know. My parents, I feel like in my adult life, do more like vacations. So like a lot of times we'll like do a trip. So I, w I would say one of our trips, like we'll usually go to like Mexico or go somewhere fun and do like a family trip. And like now at this stage of my life, like I just value quality time so much, especially with my parents. Like I just love getting to spend time with them. Yeah, because you get to travel for work now. Yeah, yeah. So I, for me, any quality time is just like the best gift. Are you excited for any matches coming up? I don't know what is on the horizon for me right now. So I'm excited to see like what's next. I'm eager to get back in the ring. Um, I got some great gear coming. I'm excited about that. <laughs> It'll be fun. And then any new merch? I don't know what I'm allowed to say, Ooh! but stay tuned on WWEshop.com, kids. <laughs> cool. Well, Maxine, thanks so much for coming by. Thank you for having me. This was so much fun. Everything's going to be linked down below. Go make sure to follow her. Tiktok, Instagram. Lightweights, thanks so much for watching. Lightweights, out. Cool. Thank you.